ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to take you on a tour of the parade home number 10. And there's a little bit of a pre-story about this house. It's so cool when our viewers and subscribers reach out to us. The owners of this home reached out to us and arranged a private tour with the builder of this home, with Corey Anderson, with uh, Alcoa Construction, to kind of give us a tour before the madness happens. So it's early in the morning, parade has not started yet. And um, I'll, uh, I'll just bug Corey with all the questions about everything they have done in this house. Okay. So let's, um, let's just walk through the house and I'll, I'll, I'll let you kind of share your experience with some of the highlights. Okay, that'll work. Well, um, actually, I don't know if, you, if, I care, <laughs> if I can bug you to remember the stats in this house. So it is a five bedroom? Five bed, four and a half bath. Um, it has two master suites. One on the main floor and one upstairs. It's almost 4,000 square feet, right? Yeah, it's like 3,900. 3, so it's 2,500 on the main floor um, and 1,400 upstairs. Awesome. And it sounds like we're uh, right right before we got together for this video, we we're kind of uh, just talking. And it sounds like this lot, uh, Corey had to go through some pretty extensive, uh, uh, I don't want to call it troubles, but it, it took some magic for this deal to happen. Uh, and it's, it is so great to see it come together. Yep. So it, I mean, it was, uh, it's in a perfect location, but it hadn't been, you know, finished. We still had quite a bit of retaining walls and dirt to bring in and so forth. And so when it was all finished, you know, it's the view lot that you can see now. And the views from this part of Washington, Corey and I were just talking how those mountains in a distance uh, to the south east are the southwest. mountains southwest are the mountains that you actually see as you go through the gorge and they usually kind of disappear until you get some white caps on the top but we're grateful that it's not snowing or raining right now um that's coming tomorrow well, that's coming tomorrow <laughs> well without further ado let's uh just go and walk through this house and give you guys a, a tour we're just standing in a courtyard to uh the left of the front door and we enter this home through this beautiful metal door and I'll, I'll I'll try to be quiet and I'll let Corey do all the talking. No, I answer any you know, ask any questions you want. The door here, this is actually a, a uh, iron door works door, iron and glass. And uh, we had custom made for this house. Um, we've got ten foot ceilings here, so we went with the nine foot door, which really kind of opens it up. You've got the entry here. And we've got some really you know, unique lights and so forth. My wife is the architect of the homes, of all of our homes. And then- So you do all of your drafting in-house? Yeah, it's just, That's awesome. we do all that. And then she does all the interior design and decorating as well. So she's got kind of the bookends and then I do everything in the middle. That's awesome. <laughs> well, I feel like she's done a great job with this house so far. I love the yeah. blend of modern and traditional architecture. I feel like that's been kind of the theme of this parade. A lot of people yeah. are trying to fit in the combo of the black and white uh, sort of modern signature with modern light fixtures, but then it still ties into a more traditional style. Right. So my wife calls, I mean, it's kind of her own little, you know, architectural style. She she really hates being trendy. You know, she doesn't want things that are going to go out of style in a year or two. She doesn't want to do stuff that everybody's going to do, um, but doesn't want to be boring either. So she calls it elegant modern, and with just kind of a little, just a little bit of industrial edginess to it so it's a, it's a large investment so you want for it to be timeless yeah exactly so that's kind of the idea so we got you know right here in the entryway one of the things we really like to do is make sure all of our our spaces our you know our living spaces are the right size and it, and you can you can really mess that up from the design standpoint because things look good on paper you know like, oh yeah that looks great and then you go to build it and you're like, well, I think it's all right. And then you go to live in it. And you're like, wait a minute, this didn't work out. It doesn't out. make sense. This hallway should have been four feet wide. Exactly. Yeah. And so like one of the things that we do, all of our homes, we we design them and then we build them. And that's a rare combination because usually the the designer and the and the builder are two separate entities. And you know, there's not a lot of feedback back and forth. So the designer might keep on designing a certain way. The builder just keeps on building a certain way. But where we have them in house, we get a lot of that feedback to say, okay, this worked, this didn't, let's change right. this. What I see happen a lot with modern houses, modern houses with big pitches, when you have an architect that's not in-house and that architect never talks to the HVAC guy, right. you end up with mini splits. Oh yeah, because there's nowhere to run all your ductwork and everything. 
So, I mean, that's one thing that really helps here. We also, my wife and I have tended to build the first prototype of any home that we have and then live in it for a couple of years. And so that sort of helps because we're able to that's live great. in it. Like, for example, this house, we, we uh, lived in the first prototype of this the very first time we ever built anything, at least what this was originally based on. And then, you know, we get some ideas like, oh, I wish we would have done this. We should have done this. And we keep fiddling. And before you know it, we've kind of perfected awesome. that plan. It's like a shakedown for a race car. Exactly. <laughs> um, so one of the things we try to do, like we, we like having you know, really big open staircases. Um, and in this case, you know, all of our staircases are going to be at least five foot wide on, on each side coming up. Um, we tried to accent with something a little bit different. We, we actually did exterior railing on the inside, which was you know kind of unique, rather than the the typical wood posts and, and it looks really good. and so forth. Really opens up that area. Mm -hmm. uh, in this area, we had just kind of some some dead space here. It wasn't a lot of room, and we're, we were like, okay, what what can we do that's you know interesting in this space? And so we we built this this uh, wine rack closet here, which was was kind of interesting. And, and we were debating, okay, what should we put on the inside? Should we should we paint it? Should we put some, you know, reclaimed wood or this or that? And my wife's like, no, it's got to be the exact same wood that we're that we're doing in the kitchen to match the cabinet. So we did the exact same cabinetry that we did. That's beautiful, you know, and, and it flows here. really well. It feels like it became a part of the kitchen. It cabinet. did. It just sort of makes the yeah. kitchen a little bit bigger. So in this this layout here, this is <clears throat> sort of the the galley um, kitchen and great room layout. You, you you've typically got three type of layouts with a home. You either got the traditional layout where the dining room is separate from everything else, which we don't see a lot of anymore. You have the, the great room layout where it's kind of a, a three-sided um, shape where the dining room is usually off to one side. It bumped out. Yeah. And then the, the galley layout where you've got family room, dining room, kitchen, all in one. All, all kind of open, I guess. Yep. A lot of us realtors are not as technical. We usually refer to it as a, an open floor plan. That's yeah. the galley layout or the open floor plan. is. Well, and the reason is because there's two open floor plans. There's this one and there's the one with the dining nook. That's true. And the difference being like this house plan, we've, we've built it both ways. We built it this way and with the dining nook. In the dining nook version, you'd have a dining nook right over here instead of the third side of the kitchen uh, where these big windows are. And then the fireplace either stays where it is or it can come in and you can add an extra you know, guest bedroom over there. But by doing it with the galley look, the benefit you get is you get one solid line of, of glass into glass the backyard. And that really, really brings the backyard entertainment and in with the house. I'm a huge fan of this slider because it really creates this indoor outdoor experience. And mm -hmm. this galley essentially grows the length of that patio all the way out to the pool. Exactly. It's a beautiful outdoor kitchen that we'll get right into. But let's talk a little bit about this kitchen. Uh, Corey, what sort of appliances did you guys use for this build? On this house, we went with Bertazzoni. Uh, Bertazzoni is one of the oldest uh, appliance manufacturers in the world. They were founded in 1882 in Italy. Um, and we've, we've had quite a few homes with Bertazzoni. And sounds, had really good luck with it. Sounds like a great uh, Italian supercar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the supercar feel. And then yep. uh, it looks like you also incorporated a hidden, is it a butler pantry or just a hidden pantry? Yeah, just a, it's a butler pantry with a hidden door here. So like, you know, the, the door, you know, opens and closes right here. We've got soft close hinges on it. Um, and then here in the pantry, you know, we've got countertop backsplashes, outlets all around, plenty of shelving. That's awesome. Um, on the you know on the island here, we went with a two tone with the with the countertops. This is quartz. Uh, it's made to look like Calcutta Venza marble, and then you know more of a, a traditional elegant white um, quartz top on the it's perimeter. On the perimeter, I think it flows really well. With our well, appliances here, we did we did a combination here. We actually went with. Um, the the oven and the range here in the in the island, and then the second oven over in the wall with the microwave. The okay. challenge of doing this, as you can see, is I was I was about to say that's a unique touch. You see it in some of the more European design kitchens where the the stove and the cooktop is in the center island. 
Normally, it's against a wall somewhere right. to vent it out. I love what you guys did with this vent, with this floating... Um, kind of a built-in hood. Kind of a, yeah. kind of a built-in hood that covers that entire countertop. Yep. I think it flows really well. By having this here, the benefit is it lets you entertain. Because you can be here cooking, you can watch TV, you can talk with your guests that are sitting around the That's table. True. That can all be open. You can talk with people out at the pool or the barbecue. And it, it really lets you entertain. And you can come over here, you know, you're working on your dishes and so forth. When the when the cooktop is is back over here, your back's, back's turned to your audience. All the time. Yeah. And so it's really fun. I mean, in this particular case, our client, you know, they really love to cook. It's really important. And so we really designed this around being able to cook really well. You've got all of your you know, utensils right here with a pullout. You've That's got Sean's favorite. The all of your your spice rack the right pull here. out spice rack and the utensils that's a must i haven't actually yep. seen the execution of this with the utensils so there's uh, individual holders for forks and spoons or cooking utensils mm -hmm. um she goes through this test every house which she pulls out <laughs> the spice rack well i've seen some fake ones so i'm like yeah yep. yeah sometimes it's just a fake detail but this is super useful that's awesome and we even had it where you're cooking here you turn around and we've got um trash the trash pull out here Plus your cookie sheet, you know, cabinet here. That's awesome. You can't ever have too much cabinet. But then you've got another trash pullout right there, right next to the sink. So right that next way, to prep area if you don't have to walk across stuff. the kitchen for all that stuff. And so that that was really fun. But again, the challenge with doing this is how do you vent, right? It's got to be something overhead, something that doesn't block the view of the kitchen. You could do a downdraft, but a little bit challenging where you're on slab on yeah. grade. So this worked out really well. A lot of people ask, well, how do you turn it on? Right? We have, there's a remote control for this. You just click a button and it comes this, on. It's beautifully done. I just, I just saw these hood vents in one of the other houses where it was, I think it was like 10 feet up. And I'm like, well, how do you jump 10 feet? Uh, right. Little remote control next to it. So yep. it's awesome. So, um, I mean, other things in the kitchen, you know, we've got the wine cooler over here, a little, uh, little wet bar area. On this side, we've got the built-in fridge right here um, with the panelized here and here with the, the freezer and so forth. And then right here, you've got a dishwasher built in and we've got it all, you know, to where you don't really even notice it. Pulls oh, out here paneling. as a dishwasher. The light there, these Bertazzoni dishwashers are so quiet, you don't know if they're on or off. And so the light lets you know if it's on or if it's finished and so forth. That's awesome. So. Um, anyway, I mean, that's these windows right here. They open up all the way so you can pass food through to guests. Uh, we took the countertop all the way out into been, the window. So kind of a theme of this parade too. I've seen quite a few pass throughs, but this is such a great execution. You mind if we go outside? Yeah, let's do it. While we're talking kitchens, let's explore the outdoor kitchen. Sure. And this door here, watch, you can push it. It'll go all the way and open this whole area up for entertaining. And the action is super smooth. So right here, you know, again, the idea is we wanted the whole, we wanted to utilize the entire backyard, have it really cozy, but, but you know, plenty of space to, to entertain. Um, you've got the pool here, you've got the spa, the splash pad. Um, right here, we've got a countertop. We, we went with a leathered, Granite top, just kind of a unique. I absolutely you know, love the leather finish. Um, you got a you know seating area here. We went with a brick finish that we then painted to match the exterior the on, the, the on the house. We've got some you know some drawers here, some storage underneath. You've got the barbecue grill right here, and then we've got a trash pullout right here, and you know our sink. I love, I love how, how, how usable and practical this kitchen is, and especially when you look at it from this angle. You've got action happening on the grill here, lots of prep room, counter space, and you come over here, you could have some stuff um, on the center island on the stove. If you love to cook and entertain, I feel like there's no, no better layout. Yep, it works really, really well. We put a, a backsplash, you know, raised up all the way around. That way you don't have wind blowing out your flame for the barbecue. Outlets. Plus you have the outlets. Uh, we've had access to the upstairs deck where we kind of wrap the stairs around 
Um, and of course the views, you have some yeah, pretty incredible views, views right. from here and this backyard feels very private. Yeah, we got our, our, our uh, fire pit over here and even, I mean, every little detail down to exactly how high the block walls were, where the, the landscaping is, you know, to have enhanced the privacy. And then even the railing, you notice like the bottom part of the railing is, is bigger and beefier. And it has like more little privacy. Movers, yeah. And then as it goes up, it becomes more and more open to enhance the view. That's a great touch. I always, I always think about the wrought iron fencing and it gives you some illusion of privacy, but that actually gives you like the bottom half right. covers up just enough. We even did, you know, the same thing here up on the deck above. It's got the, the thicker down where, you know, you can sit and you can enjoy privacy, but then the top part still opens up so you can see and have the view. I love all the custom iron work and uh, the, the color of everything matches the windows and really ties in with the house perfectly. Right. Awesome. Well, I'll uh, I'll follow you to wherever this tour flows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we come here, you know, from the from the family. Well, I guess we can close this door here. A little chilly today. Yeah, if you notice here be, in the, <clears throat> it's supposed to be 60 degrees later today, and then snowing tomorrow. I know. So right here in the family room, um, you come in. And, you know, it, it's just the right size. It's not too big, it's, you know, if it gets too big, it's hard to decorate. You're like, where do I put, you know, some extra furniture and stuff. If it's too small, you're cramped. Well, it becomes an issue with the TV too, because then if right. it's too big and it's too pushed out, you have to find something for that space in between. Exactly, so this is, you know, just the perfect size for the family room. Right here, you know, what we have with the fireplace we like the big, wide um, fireplaces that make a statement. Uh, the fireplace itself is 60 inches, and we've recessed it about eight inches here. So that essentially acts as our, our mantle um, here. And then with the fan, it projects the heat out. Um, the tile we went with is, is a concrete look. I love know, it. Uh, That's the industrial touch. Exactly. The, uh, the mantle here, you know, this whole thing is, is a floating mantle. You know, it's strong enough, you can sit on it, stand on it, whatever. Um, which was a little bit of an engineering uh, uh, challenge to, to make that work to where we could, you know, cantilever that out and support it. And it's cantilevered all the way back through the entire fireplace. That's beautiful. I love the floating the look, and I was actually wondering the same thing because, you know, naturally somebody would want to put stuff on it. Right. It's a lot of weight to support. Yeah, you know, and I mean, um, it supports you know quite a bit of weight, so we did that. We we have uh, we have the lighting underneath. We have outlets underneath in case you know Christmas time or whatever they want to plug stuff plug in and have some in. lights. And then we we wrapped it with the exact same wood as in the kitchen, and so that really kind of brought that it's out. Super consistent and it flows throughout the whole house. Yep. I love that you guys did that. The TV here, if you notice here, is actually so it's you know it's a piece of art but we went with the Samsung frame TV, which sits flat against the wall, and then you're able to put a frame around it. So when you're watching TV, you turn it on as a TV, when you turn it off, it goes to your favorite piece of art. I love it. Which is kind of cool. Doesn't have any like electronic components at all. It has a separate wire that runs actually over to a closet in the other hallway that controls the entire TV. It's a super thin, long wire, and then you have a control yep. box. Exactly. I've got one of those, and I absolutely love it. So it's a lot of fun. The, uh, I'll say one last thing about the, the kitchen here and also how it ties into the mantle, or the hearth, I should say. Uh, we wanted to do something interesting with wood. You know, everybody tends to always do the same thing, you know, whether they're all doing knotty alder or, you know, the latest trend has been to do, you know, rift cut white oak. It's what every, you know, everybody sort of follows everybody else, but we wanted to do something different. So in this case, we actually went through almost every species of wood and we, we we tested, you know, what is it going to look like with, with a stain, with a glaze. We tried dark glazes, white light glazes, natural stains, and, and anyway, this is what we ended up settling on. This is actually hickory. We took out some of the big knotty pieces so it didn't look, you know, rustic, and then we glazed it uh, to bring out the, the natural grain, which ended up I really cool. It, like I was telling you earlier, we see a lot of kind of a modern flair into more traditional styles. 
and I've been looking at the cabinets and you've answered the question that I had in my head. I keep seeing these cabinets in the modern houses that go back to some of the some of the almost older traditional uh, wood selections, mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't doesn't disrupt uh, my thinking when I look at it because normally if you see uh, wood cabinets in the modern house, it kind of messes with you and you're yeah. like, no man, it should be either painted or right. some, some European or looking style or yeah. plastic. Yeah. But this makes total sense. With the knots removed, it actually has that more modern looking pattern. Exactly, it has more of a clean look and that's that's where where my wife would call it, you know, elegant modern. Is you still got just a little bit of organic touch to it, so it's right. not because that's the only trouble with with true modern is it's just a little bit cold, you know. Yep. We have a lot of clients that are either one way or the other, right. they either love modern or they say no more black and white. Right, and this way, you know, you've got some of the the edginess of modern, but it's still got some warmth. It's still very you know, feels very timeless. The the bottom half, we wanted to accent it. This is actually ash and you don't normally see cabinets built out of ash. Usually they just build like baseball bats out of ash. Um, but it's a very, very hard wood. We stained it black and then did a white glaze and that brought out the, the, uh, the wood grain. We did it specifically for the pattern because we, we really like that grain on the, on the bottom half. That's awesome. So anyway, that's kind of the idea there. Now, uh, I mean, you can see here, all of our uh, electronics, it's all, you know, the house is wired as a smart uh, house. We've got Lutron blinds, all the blinds are automatic, all this, the uh, switches are all, you know, Lutron and they're all- So convenient to have. You know, you can control them from your, from your phone, you can control them remotely, or it's just easy to, you know, turn on and off. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of their dusk to dawn timers. You just exactly. automate the whole thing, you don't have to do a thing, your house just runs itself. Right, same thing with your, with your blinds and everything. You can see here we've got some light filtering blinds that that will adjust height based on the the sun outside. Time of the day. Yeah, that's awesome. It's kind of cool. So um, we can come in here. We got laundry room right here. Um, one of the things that check out this wall that we did here. Yeah, we got some dog <laughs> some dog wallpaper. So um, our clients, the owners of this house. Uh, they have a couple of dogs, loves their dogs. And so this is as much a, a dog washing room as it is a laundry room. Um, take a closer look at this. Yeah, and there, there's a separate laundry upstairs as well. But in here we've got, you know, a large full-size granite composite sink with, with a sprayer that pulls out. So this is kind of doubles as the dog wash a little bit. And then you got your, your uh, washer and dryer. You got a folding top, you know, folding counter over the top here. Um, some extra closet back here. This is just this is where all the media room and security cameras and all that stuff are at. You got a little bit of a mud room here with a with a you know drop zone desk, so you can do a little bit of work or you know drop your keys off, etc. Put your mail, sort your mail, that sort of thing. It's a great place to sort your mail because usually you come in through the garage, bring right. Stuff. You got a whole pile of mail. Right. And you're like, what do I do with all this stuff? We usually just store it until we shred it. <laughs> I know. Um, back here in the in the uh, master bedroom, we have this. Color-wise, this was a little bit unique because most of the house kind of has you know some greens and browns uh, to the accent. In this particular case, and, and the reason we have two masters is uh, our clients, their mother uh, is living with them, so she's going to have this master. And then for the time being, they're upstairs in the second master um, suite. But she was adamant, she wanted blue. You know, the rest of the house had a little bit different accents, but she's like, nope, I want blue. Don't argue with the mother. And so the trick is, okay, how do we make that work and still blend with the rest of the house? So it was a little bit tricky. Um, you've got access right here, you know, out to the backyard. You come in here into the bathroom. Um, again, you, you see how much light there is. And here, lots and lots of natural light. Beautiful round light yeah, fixture. Beautiful fixtures. We got a freestanding tub here. You see, we got the blue cabinets. Maybe on the cabinets. Yep, which is always. You've you know, got a blue you know. touch in that tile in the shower as well. Exactly. So this tile here, and I don't know if you remember from from earlier with the pool. This is the same tile that we have on the pool. Come take a closer look at this. So this is a porcelain tile. They're, they're uh, large 24 by 48 inch tiles. 
Um, we've got the floating bench right there, floating quartz bench, the, the tile in the drain, and even around the corner there, we've got the little you know, niches for soap bottles and so forth. That's awesome. Nice um, standalone tub. And of course you have pool access from this bedroom because it's right next to yep. it. We can head on up. Oh, we can head over here and check out the, close this door. Over here, you know, we have a powder room here. We went with some unique looking uh, wallpaper in there. Take a look at that. I'm a big fan of wallpaper and powder rooms. It just makes them look- Makes it interesting. Uh, we, so this right here, this is a, a, an ensuite, either guest bedroom or in, in this case, they've got, we've got it set up as an office. So this could be an office that gives you access from the exterior. If somebody's coming to visit you, you don't exactly. have to walk them through. And you got the, the courtyard that we started off with, you know, right outside the door here. And in this case, you got the beautiful views out over the valley right here. This is where, um, you know, they'll be working. And even on the doors, you can have them open. Or if you want some privacy, so they've got blinds between the glass right here, you know, and they're adjustable. So that makes it kind of nice. And then of course you've got the electronic Lutron blinds exactly. and the rest of the windows. Yep. So, you know, it's just a really fun space. It can be a totally separate, you know, mother-in-law suite or an office. And you or, could repurpose it how you wish. Exactly. Uh, we can head up the stairs now. Mother-in-law suite in this house is actually pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few of them actually. So right here, you know, again, we continued the, the outdoor, you know, railing look. Um, we've got up here, you've got a little bit of a, a game nook, you know, or if you had like a, a baby grand piano or, you know, whatever, it's just like a little library area. So in this case, we got it set up like a game nook. It's the second hangout area, essentially. Exactly. So you've got your family room here, another TV, got a little wet bar here, you know, behind you. Um, KitchenAid yeah. microwave. Yep. So, you know, just a really nice open space. You see how much light we have here. You know, we've got light from all, all directions. We put the, the mirrors in the stairwell because it's such a I love big that space. placement because it just plays so nicely with those windows and the rest yep. of the geometrical forms there. And you look here, like anywhere you look, it actually makes it look like we have more windows because yeah. it's reflecting all the light from those windows from any angle that you're at. It really does. Plus the windows over here, or the, the mirrors yeah, over the mirrors here as well. the mirrors across the way. Yeah. That's cool. So it really opens it up quite a bit, enhances, you know, the, the cool light fixtures and so forth. Um, and in this room we have, you know, great views out over the mountains. We have access out onto the deck. Um, Look right here. It's a really good sized deck. Yeah, so you know, it's perfect size to sit here. You can look out over the view. You look down, you know, at the pool and spa area. Um, All of my friends with kids that have a similar setting. Would jump right off. Would jump right off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, one, one thing that we, you know, we've kind of evolved it over the years. We've been doing this a long time and and the way we're doing decks now, um, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's it's extremely durable, holds up really, really well. Uh, best way that we've found thus far. We've got, the whole thing is waterproofed up underneath the, the stucco um, and the sheathing. We've got the whole entire perimeter is waterproof. All the doors are waterproof before the doors go in. We then have uh, cement board, you know, hardy backer down over the entire deck, waterproofed again. And then we have a porcelain tile here. And all, you, you notice all of the, the floor trusses under here, they're all, you know, two inches lower than the floor so we can properly waterproof them. Plus they slope off. And even right here, you notice- The channel. This, we've got a, it's an expansion joint. And so it's a piece of, of uh, expansion joint that so will allow the flex. To flex. We got one here, one in the corner, one over there, so that way, 
you, know, you don't end up with cracked tiles. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that detail. Often we go through these homes and we glaze over old engineering details right. because for one, we, we don't know, for two, we don't have the format to cover it, but mm -hmm. it's really nice to see this from a builder's perspective because stuff like that is what's gonna keep this tile looking great for years to come exactly. instead of it cracking and flexing because everything moves. Yeah, my, my big thing when I build stuff, I, I try to only offer um, products that I know that it's going to last a long time because you know my preference is I want my clients to to you know call me back to say hey how are you doing or hey I have someone else that wants to build or, or ready to build another home. you know ready to build another home rather than hey can you come fix this and the best way to do that is to build a better product from the start that's incredible that's so. that's a great way to look at business yeah in here we're back in the house one thing that was kind of fun so you notice this this painting right here so we, again, the homeowners, they have, um, they have a Doberman that they're really fond of. And so we actually had a, uh, this piece of art commissioned for, you know, of, of the owner's uh, dog. And if you notice the colors in it, the colors here, and then start looking around, they this is actually where else. we pulled all the accent colors in the entire house was out of that painting. That's so beautiful. Every single you know, accent color I'm house. I'm that obsessed over our dogs too. I would totally do something yeah. like that in our it's house. Super cool. <laughs> and I have really to have, cool. you know, I've got bragging rights because my daughter is actually the one that, that did the painting. She did the is, painting? Which is really that's cool. That's incredible. She's so, super talented. That's kind of fun. I might have to commission her to do some paintings. I know. <laughs> so you, you come in here, we have, so this is just a guest bedroom right in here. But again, even with the guest bedroom, look at how much natural light we have. We got windows from multiple directions. And that's actually really, really key. Most houses you go in, they don't have a lot of windows. They try to save some money, you know, by not doing as many windows. But if you only have windows on one direction, you get too much contrast and it, it, it just looks bad. You need to have multiple directions. Lighting it from every angle. Yeah. You got the guest bathroom right here. You can take a peek at in there. And then in here, this is an, you know, it could be another bedroom or in this case, we've got it set up as an upstairs office. Upstairs office. This is the upstairs office. So in this case, you know, both, uh, both owners, they both work uh, from home. She works down in the, in the downstairs office off the courtyard and he works up here That's in incredible. this office. And so this is the view, you know. I love there. all the decor and how, how, yet how minimalist this space feels because right. everything is just nice and spacious, no clutter. Yeah. My wife, I, I, it's amazing to see, she spent more hours, I think, doing the design and the decor than I did building the entire house. It's a form of art. It was so much work. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's a form of art. I feel like some, some people like your wife are super talented and I don't care what budget you give me, I wouldn't be able to do it. Oh, no, no, <laughs> I, I couldn't do any of this. I, I'm really good at the, the structure and the layout, making sure everything comes together perfectly. But bigger like, picture. This creative part, that's that's all her. She, I mean, even down to every single book, she bought every book based on its size and its color and, and so forth. That's awesome. So, Makes a huge difference. Yeah. Right here, you know, I mean, some of these, like for example, uh, the HVAC, this is a, a carrier product. It's actually a, a 19 sear variable speed uh, blower which basically means it's super super comfortable you don't like if you notice you can't even hear the air on right and it's, it's really quiet you don't even notice when it comes on because most air conditioning and, and heating systems they're either on you know 100% or they're off and they're they, they waste a lot of energy and you also get that effect where it's either really really Too cold or really really hot you know you're never quite comfortable with a variable speed blower it's always on just you know, it ramps up from you know, 1% to 100%, it just balances exactly how much air that the house needs and makes it a lot more comfortable. We also put air returns in every single bedroom, again, so the air can really circulate extremely well without feeling like it's a wind tunnel sucking through the house. That's awesome, makes a huge difference. It does feel super comfortable in here. In here. And so this is the second master bedroom. Um, and then you notice all the views and the windows, you got access right here out onto the deck. Um, this painting, this is actually another one that my, that my daughter painted. That was actually a watercolor that she did. It's beautiful. It's just kind of cool. And it really fits the style of this room perfectly. Yep. Wow, she's really talented. Exactly. 
in here you've got the the bathroom and you notice here even in even in the toilet room we've got um we've got these shelves here on this side and on this side we've got shelves right here and the reason was was there was so much space we didn't want the shower to be this, this big long tunnel and so we we utilized that space and made shelving on both sides just for a you know unique it's touch. A great use of space. I love that there is tile consistent throughout this entire area, mm -hmm. all the way into the closet. And this has actually also been a theme. Michelle and I have been counting during this parade how many closets will have a washer and a dryer inside of them. Yeah. And it makes so much sense on an upper level because if you have just one central location to do laundry in a house, it's usually downstairs, or maybe some homes will have an upstairs laundry, but it's so convenient to have it right in your closet. Exactly. And by doing it this way, with with doing the tile, you notice all of our tile is, is or our baseboard is tile in all the bathrooms. The reason is, you know, it doesn't take very much water to get up against your baseboard it's and then it's really waterproof. Yeah. You know, this way we don't have to worry about that. This entire area, since we're on the second floor, uh, we treated it just like a shower. So the whole entire thing has a shower pan, has a drain. Um, Cause we're up above the office downstairs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah you wouldn't want to have ceiling problems. No. There. <laughs> um, and right here, for example, you notice the colors we've got, uh, we got black herringbone and on, on the black herringbone tile, we went with gold accents. So all the faucets, the lights, etc., against the black tile are all gold. And then everything with the, the white marble tile all has black accents. I love it. I think it plays really nice together. In here, you notice in the in the the shower, we went with a floating quartz bench, and then we have you know the the niche for your shampoo bottles and so forth here in the corner. The drain is there underneath the niche, and then the handle right here. That way you don't have to walk in, and get soaked, and then walk around the corner without around. getting soaked. As the, the all the convenience pieces, we've been looking at a lot of the braid homes and. I absolutely love, I'm always a huge fan of seeing a house it's just so functional, you know, when you're gonna live in mm -hmm. there, you're gonna be comfortable. And it sounds like through the design process between yourself and your wife, uh, test driving this plan essentially in a, in a prior rendition of it, I feel like a lot of these design elements are just worked out as you live in a house. And it's exactly. great to have, you know, this is what, the second or third generation of this floor plan? Exactly. Yep. That's awesome. So it's been really fun. I mean, our, our big push we try to to build homes that are longer lasting, they're less expensive to maintain, and they're more comfortable to live in. That's kind of our our three big you know areas that we try to shoot for. And, and a lot of that, it, it's not just the you know the amazing decor, the amazing finish, and so forth. It's the things you don't see. You know, there's a lot of people you know that that, that they can just kind of you know put together a house and then put a nice you know bunch of lipstick on it at the right. end. You know lots lots of, of things you can do to make it's something look really nice at the end it's but, literally what's inside that matters <laughs> yeah i mean there are lots and lots of details with this home that you would never know you know unless i told you each little detail you know like for example you know all the walls are two by six there's there's you know an r30 wall there's you know r50 ceilings with radium bear i mean all these things in southern utah makes a huge, huge difference, difference when it's triple digits outside and right. it's really hot in the summertime right. It could either, you know, lack of insulation could do a number on your uh, right. power bill and having insulation keeps your furnace and your AC running right. a third of the time. So every little detail, I mean, this, we, we've put a lot of thought into all those details to how do we make this house last, you know, for the, for the owner? How do we make it as comfortable as can be? You know, how do we make it as inexpensive for them to maintain so they can just focus on enjoying the space, enjoying the house? That's so that, that's really important to us. Corey, well, thank you so much for giving yeah. us a, a fully detailed tour of this thank property. You. And uh, if we have any any folks that are interested in building with you, we'll make sure to put them in touch with you and hopefully put something together. Yeah, no, that'd be great. We have, uh, we love working with people, you know, on their own lots. Um, you can reach us at alcoaconstruction.com. We also have a new community that we're breaking ground on um, out near Sand Hollow. It's called River Heights. Um, the website is riverheightsutah.com and we'll have lots ready in six months and start um, building homes out there as well. That's awesome. That's a beautiful area too. Yeah. Thanks, Corey. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.